you still there? You know, you always talk right when the live button comes on. We're live. <laughs> you do this every I time. I have every hey, single time. At least I'm consistent. I right? like consistency, but you know, I like it. I like a little change too. And I think we all need a little change in our life to just keep moving forward progress kind of thing. Change is good. Change is good. So last week we didn't go live because I couldn't get it to connect. And this week I figured out that um, I just needed to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. That speaks to both of us. So patience. I'm, uh, I'm working with another organization and um, we're not seeing eye to eye on everything, which is okay, which is fine, but communication's key. And um, so one of them communicates in a way that I find not pleasant. And so uh -huh. my immediate response often is just, if you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. And um, so then I'm like, well, I'll just communicate via email. And then I go, well, you know where that can get you, John. So then mm -hmm. what I do is I kind of think it, write it, and then I wait 24 to 48 hours before I actually send something out just to make sure that um, I'm loving on my neighbor appropriately, um, you know, because we all kind of perceive things a little differently. So, but, you know, I need time to think about that. What are some of the things that you do to take some time to think? <laughs> well, anyone who knows me knows that patience is not my strong suit, but I am a work in progress. So I am working on that every day. I get better about it every day. And um, so I've done some of that, you know, writing things out and sitting on it and thinking about it. But then, you know, like I think about a couple of situations where I've done that and then still, you know, like bust through the door, like a bull in a china shop anyway, even though I've gone through the steps. So let me stop though. You know, we didn't properly introduce ourselves. Um, yeah, like there could be people watching right now. They have no idea who you are. They have no idea who, I, well, they know who I am because this is on my page. Oh, so. okay. Well, who are you? you want me to who am I? Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, since it is 1216. I'm yeah. Dr. John Rothwell, Advanced Practice Registered Nurse um, with Island Direct Primary Care. I'm a board certified family nurse practitioner. And you come and chat with me every week. Every week, because you have this really cool title thing. It's called Out of the Box 2020. And I think at Island Direct Primary Care, um, we're a unique practice and we do things a little outside the box and, and it all starts with listening to our patients first and so um, we typically see one patient an hour and um, and we spend time with our patients listening to our patients and um, and really just trying to determine what the root cause of everything that is and the challenge with that oftentimes is you don't get that instant gratification of figuring out what's going on right now um, but you also at least know that, um, you know, we're not playing shotgun medicine. We're not just throwing medications at people. We really want people to live longer, healthier, happier lives. Which I love so much. And I love that you come and talk with me every week and that you are so patient with me because um, that's, that's a unique talent in and of itself to be patient with me. And I appreciate it. So... So usually what happens is you, you and I meet up, we get online, uh, we chit chat a little bit, and then we talk about what we're going to talk about that day. And usually I'm driving the train and which I like to drive the train, but sometimes I want somebody else to take the wheel. And today I said, you drive the train, you decide. And you decided something about me anyway. So it still looks like I'm driving the train. Everybody's going to think that I'm always driving the train. But Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. So it, when, I, when I'm talking to Nola and, and Maddie, um, my wonderful teammates, um, we talk about, you know, our patient story, um, our community story. And so I think those stories are extremely important and people can relate to that because people say, oh, that's me too. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm not alone. And so who knows your story better than you? Right? That's true. And and so, you know, look, I have an interesting story and but I don't want this to be about me because I'm here for you, right? I'm a I want to be a steward for members in our community and so if you're thinking about yourself, it's very difficult to do that. Um, but what I do do is I do a self inventory, um, sometimes more frequently than other times, where I look within myself to see, you know, is there something in my story that I can utilize to help others? And, um, and so you, not only as a patient, but as a business professional and stuff like that, have a very unique story that's living in this current time, in this current pandemic. And so one of the things that I've been watching on social media that you do, I think would be extremely therapeutic for members of our community. And um, so that's why I made it about you, right? Well, it's really interesting, actually, because, you know, we've talked about before how social media can be misleading. And, um, you know, you think you, you see one thing on social media and then you find out later that something else altogether is going on. And I have recently been posting galleries of pictures every morning of you know, this beautiful walk that I take. But the reason that I started doing that is because I was feeling pretty yucky and had been for a while. And I knew that I needed to be regularly walking and exercise. And I knew that, everybody knows that. I mean, we all know it. Well, we're tired of hearing it, right? Yeah. I'm tired of hearing yeah. you need to eat right and exercise more. Well, yeah. no joke. And I don't <laughs> say joke, right? I mean, yeah. we know this. Yeah. And, and so from our perspective at Island Direct Primary Care, we kind of look at those five pillars of health, physical, mental, emotional, financial, and spiritual health. And they all kind of coincide together. And so when we look at that approach, then that then we just it's not about eating right and exercising more is it there, there's much more to it but that becomes a part of the solution not just you know kind of the easy way out for especially a medical practitioner it's easy to say okay well you just need to eat right and exercise more well if we're talking about gut health it's a lot more complicated than that but anyways, it, okay. is. I can it, go. Is. <laughs> it is. So, okay. So what happened with me? Because and, and my friends that are watching this are going to be like, oh, wow. Because it looks totally different. You know, they probably are all like, Psh, look at her just going, walking on the beach every day, blah, blah, whatever. But what happened was I was feeling so bad. I was feeling nauseated every day and just really feeling yucky. And it was going the wrong direction. And so I thought, okay, I've got to change some things. So I changed the way I was eating purely out of necessity. It wasn't because I wanted to go on this, you know, strict diet or anything, but purely because when I was eating like I usually eat, which by the way, was not terrible already. I was, you know, eating pretty healthy already, pretty much. Um, but I had to change because I was nauseated every time I ate something it was crazy. And and I just woke up feeling yucky. And so, yes, I am very blessed, you know, that I live at the beach and I can go and I can walk on the beach and I should have been doing that for a long time. But when I started, I felt pretty yucky. And so I didn't walk very far. Um, also blessed that I have a walking buddy and she and I prompt each other. We have this, this system, you know, whoever wakes up first, will shoot a text to the other one and say, walk, walk, that's it, walk. And, you know, if we don't respond, fine, but we do, we do respond and we walk every single day. And when we started out, she had been walking for a long time. It was part of her routine. So she can walk forever. I think she could probably walk 10 miles on the beach and not even think twice about it. But me, I was kind of, you know, I didn't want to walk too far because frankly, I didn't know if I could get back. Right. <laughs> and, you know, let me, let me stop you here for a second, if it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I really like about this part of your story is your friend. Yeah. And and this is what, you know, um, many people may 
refer to as an, an accountability partner, right? Someone to help hold you accountable. Um, you know, for me, you know, I'm trying to help guide you to optimal health, right? And so that's why I focus on those five pillars of health. And, um, but it takes more than me, right? It takes a village. And so, you know, you have, you have, I know there's people other, you know, I have other patients who are good friends of yours, thanks to you introducing them to me. And if they notice that something's not quite right on the inside compared to what's being portrayed on the outside, they kind of hold you accountable. Hey, have you called Dr. John or, you know, what are you doing about that? And we need those accountability partners in life, whether it's from a business perspective, right? You and I've talked about those kind of things, even though, you know, we may or may not use each other certain ways. Um, we may have other resources that we were already using or something that's like, look, you know, don't forget about thinking about this. Today, you know, we were talking about the patient portal and the, the lack of flexibility that it has. And you said, well, John, you know, I just want to let you know, make sure that, you know, not make sure you didn't put it that way, but that's what you're telling me. I is make sure <laughs> that you put in the subject line and an yeah, identifier yeah. when you're emailing the patients in case they have to go back to it in the future and they don't have to go back and log in and search for it. And so whether it be a date or, you know, here's what the item was, laboratories, you know, September 5th, 2020, that kind of thing. And so, um, but that's you holding me accountable, right, to, to the message that I'm delivering to the patient. I think this is a good thing, you know, whether it's personal or from a business perspective. Surely, I mean, I have four accountability partners um, that I talk to, whether it's business or marriage or uh, spiritual. Um, we don't go to the same church or anything like that, but spiritually we're aligned. Some, some are older. My oldest accountability partner is 84. And my youngest one is 40. So that's a lot of knowledge, experience, and then some wisdom sprinkled in on top, right? And so, uh, no, I, I think that's a wonderful thing you're doing. So, anyways, uh, no, you're absolutely right. And the accountability partner um, part of it, you know, that just kind of happened. You know, she's a great friend and we always laugh and you know we tell stories and we talk about what's going on and you know in each other's lives and it's it's the highlight of my day absolutely it's the highlight you know and a lot of times um, we're both still half asleep when we're stumbling out there um today was one of them i i started out telling her a story and it took me three times the length of time it should have taken for me to tell the story just because i was still half asleep but it's great to have an accountability partner. I have one in business who is also amazing. I'm, I'm blessed to have, you know, wonderful people around me. But this walking, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I have never, I think, consistently um, engaged in, in activity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have, you know, I mean, I've every, I think everybody's exercised, you know, adopted this exercise plan or, you know, that activity plan. But but this has been the most consistent um, activity plan that I've ever participated in, I think. And now what, it's been really interesting for me because my body wakes up naturally now. Mm -hmm. um, and I open my eyes and the first thing I do is go look out the window to see what the sunrise is looking like. And uh, I just kind of start naturally moving to, you know, getting my clothes on and pulling my hair up pebble style. And um, I just, it, before I know it, I'm out the door. I, I'm even, I'm still half asleep and I'm out the door. And it went from walking for 15 minutes to walking to 30 minutes to walking for an hour. And I think yesterday, I think we were out there for an hour and a half right. because we were just talking and walking and, we probably walked two and a half miles yesterday. You know, we kind of loosely gauge, you know, how far we are going, but we're averaging about two miles every day, unless one of us has something, an appointment, you know, or something that we have to get back to. Right. It's a small change in my routine that has made a huge difference in the way I feel in general. It's crazy. I did not expect that. It's awesome. But yeah. that's all it takes. You know, people think you need to make all these big drastic changes. And I think on the surface, they look very drastic. If 
If you were to ask yourself a year ago, would you be willing to walk every day for three months starting at 530 in the morning? It probably would have looked something like, oh, heck no. I, ain't I, doing would, be, that. I right? would be very dramatic about a response. If somebody yeah. asked and and that. so it could be overwhelming, <laughs> you know, but the reality is, and this is this is the importance of story, right? Of your yeah. story. And reality is now that you're doing it, it's a small change. It, it is. That's made a big difference. And I'm glad you said, so this, the past two days, I have gone to bed before 1030. Ooh, you know me impressive. well. Enough. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, um, and I set my alarm for 530 and for six. And, um, and I'm like, you know, I need to really, I just need to wake up early. My morning start off you know, I'm a kind of God family community guy. So my morning start off with my daily devotions, my spiritual fitness before I do anything else, because once the body gets moving, it's, it's like a Mack truck. It's not stopping until my head hits the pillow. And so, um, so I'm like, I need to wake up earlier so that I can devote more physical time to my health. Right. So, you know, so exercise and that kind of thing. And so in order to do that, I need to wake up earlier because, because I've, I eat healthy now. Um, I'm sleeping seven or eight hours. You're talking to a guy who only slept three or four hours for 20 something years. Oh, wow. Um, I did that. That was just my day. You know, I never slept that much. And so now that I get all this sleep and I feel rest and all that, I have all this energy, but I need to, I need to. I need some movement in my life. I need, you know, increase and and I can't go play rugby right now. And so it makes it tough. And so I'm like, I need a small change. And so the small change is waking up early. Um, and so I'm not doing a very good job. No. <laughs> no. Do you need an accountability partner? No. I'm snoozing it, girl. <laughs> you body. need an accountability partner. You need somebody going, hey, let's go. Let's do this. I do. I do, yeah. and, and and it won't be my spouse because she's like, hey, your alarm's <laughs> going off. <laughs> well, you can't have mine because mine is the best in the whole world. She's she's perfect. So let me tell you this too. So here's another thing that's happened. So I've always been intrigued with the idea of weight training. I, okay. I've never consistently done it. I've never, but I've always been intrigued with it. So here's where I'm at now. Now that I've made this little change and, you know, I'm walking every day and I'm feeling, you know, more energetic and, you know, so now we're talking about doing some weight training. So how about that? That's exciting, right? Super, super exciting. You know, weight training in itself and i don't i used to lift heavy weights as a, as a young man you know in sports and athletes and even now i'm 50 and um i feel better than i did in my 20s probably because i'm not filling it with the toxins that i used to um, i'm surely not as strong um at least weight lifting weight strong um but uh i do lift weights and so i use some dumbbells and some kettlebells and, and medicine balls. If I don't get my own way, because I'm a very competitive person, mm -hmm. hence I'm 50 and still playing rugby. Um, if I don't get my own way, that resistance training, um, it's so good for you. So when you're walking too, there is, you know, when you're having movement, muscle on muscle, bone on bone, when you're walking in that sand and it's taking a little bit more energy to put your left foot in front of your right foot and vice versa. That is so good for your bones and your musculoskeletal system. So as a, as a young woman who is um, continuing to go in life, I'm walking on shells here, being really careful when I say. So <laughs> the importance of bone, yeah. because there is a change in hormones is yeah. tremendous, right? And so yeah. we don't look at that. The, you know, we always want a medication. We always want to supplement in these kind of things because of, you know, osteopenia and osteoporosis and stuff, because as your estrogen progesterone levels change, it affects bone health. And, um, and one way to keep yourself from either needing a supplement or a higher dose supplement or multiple supplements is that increased movement. 
I hate the word exercise these days because exercise is just like diet and exercise, diet and exercise. Yeah. How about no? How about just increasing movement? You know, do activity. Something. Yeah. Activity is a good word. Something that you like, right? Do something yeah. that you like. So I like playing rugby. So in order to play rugby, I have to play rugby, and and so that's increased activity. I don't have to go out and you know run ten miles. I do need to do a little bit of preparation because the recovery times live long, but not a lot. You know, I can just go. I, so I coach rugby, right? So I've been mentoring over 80 kids every year in the sport of rugby in our community and um, and helping them new college opportunities. And so that's increased opportunity without um, or in, increased activity without really got to increase exercise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Which okay. is exactly why I go out dancing with my friends. Oh, that's a video. See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but really, I mean, seriously. And I also want to say, you know, I joke a lot about being so impatient. And I am impatient. However, I'm not as impatient as, you know, as I portray. And, and I have learned, actually, one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the past with my health was being impatient mm -hmm. and I'm not so much anymore so like when I say like starting to walk when I started walking if I walked for 10 minutes I was okay with that you know like I didn't beat myself up because I only walked 10 minutes instead of 30 minutes or an hour and then you know and I've increased it naturally without mm -hmm. putting pressure on myself or I just did what I wanted to do and I'm going to do the same thing with with strength I've already started, you know, doing a little bit of, I've got some dumbbells, some small dumbbells, and I use those a little bit, but I'm actively looking into increasing that and, you know, getting into a program, but I'm going to do it slowly and oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do it as it feels good to me. And that's a big change that I've made that has been, I think the best thing, the best. I think that's awesome. I have a, I have a, uh, a patient um, who just doesn't have, you know, doesn't increase movement, doesn't do any activity. Um, he's over 500 pounds Ooh. and, and he's just like, John, I don't know where to start. And I go, well, first of all, you're one strong man and don't forget that. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I don't even lift weights. And I go, well, you carry around 500 pounds. Right. Right. And so don't knock yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Um, you're a strong man. And then when we talk about activities, um, we say, look, we started off walking five minutes away from home. Walk five minutes and then walk back. Don't time, just walk five minutes out. Whether you walk back in less than five, more than five is immaterial. And then I go two weeks, two, two days out of the week, I want you to walk alone. Two days out of the week, I want you to walk with your wife and you have to hold her hand, right? And, and so, so this increases intimacy and stuff like that. And so it allowed them to have physical touch that was intimate um, because there was things that just next to impossible because of size, you know, and, um, and, and, and he's a wonderful man. He's working super, super hard now. Um, and it's no, no longer five minutes. It's more and these kind of things and just, and just build it. You just need to do something. So if you don't take any action, then, um, you know, that's not good. And, when I raise my boys, I have three boys and they're all from, I have one biological son. I got three boys that I consider, you know, really four that I consider sons. Um, the other three are in the military. And I go, you know, guys, sometimes the greatest sin is indecision, right? Uh, and that is, you know, sitting on your duff and thinking about it, but not doing anything about it. And so, um, let's encourage everybody to be like Janice and take a small action because even with the smallest action, you can feel so much better. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. It's been surprising to me. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it overall. Well, and, you know, the toughest part about you being a patient is you are the kind of person who almost has to figure it out on their own. Yeah. That's a really nice way to say that I'm hard headed. <laughs> I noticed that I, I picked that up. You know, you don't, don't think that that got by me, but I'm okay. I, I own my stuff. 
<laughs> I own mine too, right? And so um, I'm, I'm yeah. glad we can hold each other accountable in, in certain ways as well. I'm truly blessed, um, you know, to continue to get to know you, um, to have you as a patient um, and, and to call you friend, you know? And, um, and it, it's getting to be awesome. So thank you for having me. I need to, I need to kind of cut short now. I need to get out of here too. Uh, so to summarize, just do it. Just baby step. Well, we don't in. want to take that away from Nike, but, yeah. uh, but baby I steps. Will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Baby do steps. Something. Do yeah. something. Be easy on yourself. Don't expect to go from, you know, zero to 60. It's okay. Just baby steps. Like you said, I love that. Walk five minutes and, you know, turn around and come back. And because sometimes the fear we talked about last time, fear, mm -hmm. fear stops us from so much. All right. I'm going to stop this live because I know you got to go and we'll keep talking and probably nobody's listening to us anymore anyway. Yeah, it's okay. But, yeah, it's all right. We, we listen. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much for stopping in to see us and we'll see you next week.